Is it going? Okay, it's recording. Okay. Cool. Great. <clears throat> All right. And I also want to record it too. So like, you know. Great. Thanks, Shane. Sure. So thanks everyone for your time uh, and attention. Appreciate it. Um, so yeah, let's let's go through some of this stuff. And I just want to start off by saying that um, you know I don't want to come up here and be like, oh hey. Here's a bunch of new things you have to add to your plate. Not at all. I want to help you build yourselves, like develop yourselves personally as just people, um, as a team, and as an agency, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and just to touch on that real quick, um, of course there are going to be some things I'm going to talk about that are going to be, you know, uh, tactful, strategic, things like that, but I think in a larger sense, and this isn't just for um, stuff here, uh, you know, as, as our company, um, this is any, this is any, any successful team um, will kind of rest a lot on some form of similar pillars to this. Um, I got this from, uh, from a coach. And I think it, I think it really, I think it helps when talking about team and talking about support for each other. Communication is probably the number one thing that's gonna make us all better people, better team members, and better as an agency and better for our clients, right? So communication's huge. You guys are all communication experts working in the industry that we work in. So I think we do do a good job on communication, but I wanna keep reminding ourselves that communication is, is a huge piece of our success. Trust, I think trust is a big thing that we could even do better at. Um, it's being able to trust that you know the person who's helping you on that project is going to help you get through to it and going to have your back. You know, it's about trust and respect. You know, respect is built into trust. Um, and then you know, and that's how we build teams. You know, I know, I know if I you know tell Aaron, hey, I really need some help with this, I can trust that he's going to help me with it. You know, and vice versa. Collective responsibility. Um, we know that there's a you know big campaigns, big projects, lots of things going on. Um, it all adds up to our own value, our team's value, and our agency's value, right? So, um, you know, we need to think about ourselves as a collective and re think about as responsible for each other. This will all impact us in a positive way. Caring, like caring about what we do, caring about another. If you see somebody else that's struggling, you see somebody else that's having a bad day, somebody that's not feeling well, whatever, let's care. Call them up if they're not here. How you doing? Can I help you out with something? You know, people will return that to you. Go out there and put it out there first and that will come back to you. Again, this will help build us as a better team and a better agency and better individuals. And pride, have a lot of pride in your work. You know, you guys work really, really hard. Everybody in here is an extremely hard worker. You guys get up early, you work late, all that stuff. Um, and I think that, um, you know, we pride is a big piece of, it'll come through in your work and it shows. I know we all do this. You guys wouldn't be here if you didn't have some elements of all these things here, but I think it's more of just a reinforcer. Like, let's let's try to really own a lot of this stuff with each other, and it'll really elevate everything that we do. So, just a quick word on that. Um, all right, so let's get into some more specifics here. Um, you know, one of the things I think that's like one of the easiest things that that we could do that you guys can do to be more well informed, to do your job that much better, to have uh, more successes. Um, you know, one of the easy things to do is working with Twitter. Who does not have a Twitter account here? Everybody's got one? Great. We are halfway there. We're most of the way there. Who's familiar with Twitter lists? A couple people. Twitter lists are awesome. You basically can take your following, you can make a, a specific following um, just for certain people in the list. So you can say, this is my client list, right? And you can have all of your clients' handles in one list and you can just look at that list and not get inundated with all the other chatter that's going on uh, for the rest of your Twitter stream, right? Not gonna talk about sports, it's not gonna talk about you know Hollywood, whatever, it's gonna talk about Coyote, it's gonna talk about Bertazzoni, you're gonna see that stuff. Um, it's good to, uh, to build lists and share lists, right? So we could all follow the same list, right? Not only lists, not only clients, uh, the companies themselves, but also our clients as people, you know? Um, so that's something else to think about too. Another thing, but that'll just kind of help you keep informed. What's gonna help you maybe do your job or get more successes in your specific role? Following the publications, maybe even better, following the journalists. 
What does this do? It allows you to really stay on the pulse of what they're talking about. Twitter moves a lot faster than traditional media. So if they wrote a report a month ago about something you think your clients might be interested in, yeah, you could hit them up and say, yeah, you wrote this a month ago. That's not too bad. That's not too far off for timing. What if you said that tweet you wrote five minutes ago? That means you're, you are investing in what that journalist or that influencer is publishing. They're taking time out to do that. Like it, Re retweet it, comment. It's all about building relationships. You have a better relationship. You can better talk to the journalist and, and know what they're into at that specific point and be able to touch on those points in order to sell in what you're trying to sell them on. This goes a long way. They see this, they feel this. And so, um, and one thing you can do if you're like, well, you know, I really want to get on this journalist's radar. Start retweeting their tweets immediately. Reach out to them after a couple days. They're gonna know it, they're gonna see it. They all see what goes on. Everybody gets notifications. Oh, you got followed by this person, retweeted. Retweets are a big thing. That means you're taking their content and giving it to your following. So that helps them build their following, build their own thought leadership, all of that. So it's not, and, and the thing about this is like, I know it sounds like, oh, well, that's just another something to do in my day. Don't look at it that way. Look at it between the cracks. We're all very busy. We all have very little time. The good thing about social media is small, quick efforts can really be impactful, okay? So when you're doing that stuff, look at it as building relationships. You know, John Schwartz, whatever. Love what you, love this. You know, love to talk to you more about this. What a great thing to engage with them on social. Who came in here, some NBC guy was like, I don't even want to take the story if I can't tweet it. You know, it doesn't make any sense for me. Everybody, Twitter is your B2B, B2C platform. This is a great way for you to connect with your clients, connect with your, um, with them as brands and as personal people, connect with your targets on your media lists, um, connect with events, connect with everything, no hashtags, all of that kind of stuff can really help inform and will help you have more successes in what you do as far as working with journalists, publications, things like that. Another great thing too is get yourself familiar with hashtags. I mean, everybody knows how hashtags work, right? You write a hashtag and then you click on the hashtag or click on somebody else's hashtag and it shows you all the hashtags of people talking about that. Here's a really good example of it. I was searching around just travel stuff, poking around Twitter, looking for travel stuff for WorldMate. I came across a, a hashtag called travel smart. Oh my God, we were looking for tips and stuff. We should be doing travel smart on almost every single tweet. It's like everybody that wants to talk about intelligent things around travel. It's great. So what a resource to find influencers. What a resource to find you know, maybe publications or journalists. What a way to connect with people. It also allows you to stay on top of trends, right? So just you kind of know what's going on out there. Things are coming up, oh wow. Look at what's trending on Twitter each day. It takes literally two and a half minutes to log on to Twitter and check all of this stuff. Check your list. Takes 30 seconds. Check a couple other things. Build multiple lists. Build them for journalists that you're going after in tech. Build them for consumer. Build them for whatever. It's such a great way. It's so easy to stay on top of this stuff and easy within 15 seconds is communicate with these people that you're targeting that's gonna take you however long to write an email, however long to follow up, put a call. You could probably bypass all of that in certain instances by doing this kind of stuff and I'll take you five minutes, right? If you have any questions about this stuff, I'm more than happy to sit down with, I can do a follow-up session and show you guys how to do this stuff manually, or you can, I can, you can ask me, you can tap my shoulder, I'll sit down with you for 15 seconds and show you, it's easy. Um, so that's just kind of using a specific platform and how to help you guys like, hopefully get a little bit more out of what you do. Um, now on a higher level here, content, client content specifically, right? We do a lot of posting and tweeting of our clients' content, right? <clears throat> it's all about building relationships with our clients as well. Follow all your clients on social media. It takes no time, right? Facebook, whatever. Your PR professionals, it's kind of part of your job. You know what I mean? So get out there. When you see a client post, if it's your, it used to be a mandatory at a place I used to work that when your client had a post or a tweet, you better be there liking it. Everybody on the team. Absolutely. 
all of this engagement adds up to getting that client's content higher visibility in the news feeds of their followers and other people. So, you know, do yourselves, do your client a service, do their team a service, do your agency a service. Engage on social. You don't have to make, you know, a big old long comment and da 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 da. Just go in there, a couple likes, a couple shares, a couple things like that, a couple retweets. You can do it really quick. Do it in the morning, do it in the afternoon. Do it once a week, do it three times a week, whatever. It all adds up and clients see it, okay? Social engagement, as we can tell from a lot of things that we've been talking to, you know, World makes a good example, a lot of other examples, a 2015 metric, social engagement, okay? They're all looking at that stuff. Facebook isn't a place where only community managers or strategists look at insights anymore. It's super easy to look at. You own the page, you open it up, you can see how your content's performing. If I'm a client and I'm like, oh wow, I got 10 pieces, 10 likes on this. I wonder who those people are. They, you can see who like it. Oh, whoa, that's my team. My team is invested in my success. It's the little things. It takes us no time, right, to do it. Do it between the cracks, between projects. Oh, I'm about to go to lunch. Let me just take one minute, one minute before I go to lunch to go through and open up two clients' Facebook streams and like their comment and share a couple things. Right? It helps a lot. Um, LinkedIn and LinkedIn groups, right? Think about LinkedIn. Not everybody thinks holistically about what they're doing with our content. Okay, great. So VentureBeat just covered my client. Awesome. That's not the end of it. That's actually, you know, that piece got out. Great. Is that client content? somewhere that it's gonna be seen. The client doesn't always think about that stuff and they don't always have social media support in-house or maybe they don't have budget for our team to work on it, um, whatever the case may be. Um, but, you know, take a minute and post that client's content. You know, take that VentureBeat article and put it up on LinkedIn. Put it up wherever it makes sense. Tweet it. The clients will see that. Awesome, thanks Aaron for helping drive this forward. We appreciate it. You know, they might not say it, but it all adds up. It's quick and easy to do. Um, it, it can be impactful. Um, and yours, post your own content. I'll get to this in a second, but um, when you see things like LinkedIn groups, and you're like, oh wow, like my client's doing you know, X topic, like whatever it is, right? Think for a second and be like, hmm, what could I do to even make this that much bigger and better, right? Like, oh, you know, this group would actually be really appropriate for that thought leadership piece that my client wants to push out. We've already published it. It was a contributed content piece, whatever it is, okay? Well, what else can we do, right? Because that will get more people to read that article that you just got published, right? You'll get more, you'll get, it'll, it'll help your original task of getting something published in VentureBeat for your client that much more valuable. So think about this kind of stuff. You guys have questions, Shane. Do you think this would be appropriate for this? Grab me. I'll talk with you for a minute. It's no problem. Yeah, that might be good. I really like that. Maybe try a couple other things, you know, this and that. You need to think holistically. One of the biggest things I think that, I, I don't know if people here are really doing it, but I really want us to do this. Because all this stuff, again, is going to map back to yourself, your team, and the agency. Okay? Look at yourself as a brand. I started doing this a couple of years ago. Like, basically, my Twitter is it used to be things that I cared about. Like, all, oh, cool, this game, or this thing happened, or whatever, you know, I really like this lunch, you know? I took a step back and I'm like, what do I want to get out of this, you know? I'm a professional, this is what I do. People actually look at this, prospective clients look at my Twitter feed, um, you know, they see me as a digital person, so they're like, okay, what's this guy all about? I switched it over and say, you know what? Follow me to stay on top of the latest news and trends in social media and digital. I got a ton of people following now. They have a reason to follow me. I'm developing myself as a brand. A brand is what you can market. After H3O, you move on, and later in life, you do consulting, all of that. All those people are brands. Think about anybody. You can think about Taylor Swift. She's a brand. And she has a team of people marketing that brand, you know? So think about yourself as a brand. Build equity in yourself as a brand. You know, think about like like SEO is just a collection of all the things on the web that add up to what you are or whatever you know that particular entity is. 
think about that. Build yourself up as a brand. This will definitely help you in your career, and the sooner you get started, the better. You guys want to talk about this in a you know breakout thing or whatever? I, 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 I you know I'm more than happy to do that. But this is what's going to help you as individuals when you're you know when you're moving on to other careers, when you're doing other things in life. This is what the this is what the players do. This is what the bosses do. The bo every these people are brands. Think about yourself like that. It'll really really help you guys. Um, so you know. And I think this kind of comes back to some of this other stuff here is think, you know, 360. Don't just go through your day going, okay, here's my action item list. You know, I've got to do this, this, I've got to do this. Okay, I've got to hurry up and do this so I can get out of here. That's not a way to be successful for yourself, for your team, or for the agency. What's going to be successful is, cool, I did this. How can I make it bigger and better? Take five minutes to do it. Can't come up with anything? Talk to one of your team members, right? Communicate. You know, let's have a collective responsibility for what we do. Have some pride in it, you know. Um, trust yourselves, trust, trust others around you, you know. Open your mind to what the possibilities are. Come up with new ideas. There's no wrong answers here, you know. It's let's be creative, let's be strategic, but let's be creative as much as we can. Um, <clears throat> because PR, because this is 2015, and I'm sure you guys have all seen this, especially people that have been here for a few years, PR is one piece of the spoke, and they're getting more and more spokes every single day. Think digital about what you're doing. Got that thing in VentureBeat. How else can I get that article out there? I wrote that article. I helped put that together. I did that. I'm building my, my brand, right? I might not have my name on it specifically. It's coming from my client, whatever. I placed that article, but that is something that um, you know, adds up to your own value, right? So think about if I had an article, if I helped my client get an article published in VentureBeat, I'd be really excited and I want to make sure that article gets as many places as possible because I'm a brand and I'm building that up. Blogs, right? Blogs will take content. Blogs will link to content. Do a quick search. Google, you can actually filter it just by blogs. Punch in some of the terms that you found that might be a hashtag or trends or whatever that you know you're thinking about your client. I'm sure you know Bertazzoni's got a ton, right? Cook beautifully, whatever, right? I bet there's blogs about cooking beautifully that would love to hear about new Bertazzoni stuff, right? Extend the life of the content, get more out of it, right? Same with groups, LinkedIn groups, etc. So just try to think digital. We all need to become more digitally minded in order to stay relevant this year as people, as a team, as teams, and as an agency, okay? All this stuff, again, clients will see this. They will see H3O, or what we're gonna be called, as smart and comprehensive. Clients, right? Everybody sees this, it comes up. So, um, you know, that's, and we can deliver extra reporting on this. At the end of the day, we do a lot of reporting. We're all analytic based, right? So talking about the wins that we got in uh, the traditional media front and how those played out through social will have clients go, wow, I don't want to go somewhere else. We had, a, we had a meeting with a prospective client, Risk IQ, yesterday, and Joe had a really good question of the client. Why do big, these big brands choose Risk IQ versus some of these other more established brands? She said, that's a great question. It's because Risk IQ approaches things a little bit different than everybody else has been approaching it, and they think about a little bit more things. There's more spokes in that wheel that they're covering or being comprehensive about. And so <clears throat> that's what we want our clients to look at us as. I got to stay with H3O. I got to work with H3O. These guys are thinking about everything. They're smart people. They're comprehensive. All this stuff adds up to that, okay? Um, going back a little bit about to developing yourself as a brand can be kind of like, uh, it's kind of a wide open thing, right? You're like, oh geez, like that's a lot to consider. I really don't know what, how I would, it, it takes a lot of thinking. What kind of brand do I want to be? That's okay, it can evolve over time, you know? Put a stake in the ground, let's build from there, right? Think about yourselves as individuals and as a team and even as an agency, where do you want to be in six months, right? Where do you want to be in a year? Aim high, you know? You want to be, you want to be a vice president here? 
in six months? Cool. Find out what it takes to get there and have a plan. This is probably the biggest thing that I see a lot of people not you know, servicing themselves as much as they should is that you know, everybody who's gonna go anywhere in life, all successful people, have a plan. Okay, think about what your plan is. It can change, it's okay. But have a plan. You know how many people run around every day and just go through life checking things off to get to the end of that's not a plan. That's not you're not gonna get anywhere in life. Okay? So let's win together and I think all these things can do it. Um, I took these notes on a piece of paper getting ready for this meeting while I was grocery shopping. These were the things I was getting when I was grocery shopping. They were on the paper, so I wrote them on the whiteboard. <laughs> Add a little color to our meeting. Great. Uh, I think I almost got that in about 30 minutes. Questions, comments? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, do we have a plan for how the French represent itself on social moving forward? Um, we don't have a plan outlined right now, but there has been, um, there's been some talk about it, and we're definitely going to have um, the necessary uh, channels. I'm assuming we'll probably start off with a Facebook, a Twitter, and an Instagram. Um, each one will have their own uh, direction and, and value. And um, so for example, like Facebook, I think it'll be a great place to post our client contents, um, show a little bit about what's happening with the agency, keep up on news, and just really use that as a way to drive awareness for H3O. Um, Twitter is a great vehicle for us to talk about things that are going on with our clients. Most agencies out there, when their client gets a hit in a big publication or some other campaign, they tweet about it. And they use hashtags and they let other people know about it and they app mention people, they do all the stuff they need to do. We haven't done that because we're rebranding, so that's gonna be a big piece of it. We'll be blogging, um, and there'll be a lot of marketing things that come. We're getting a new website, uh, we'll have a lot of new marketing materials, we'll have new pitch deck stuff, we'll have like, all that stuff is being revamped, and we're really excited that our fearless leader is coming out here to help us uh, understand all that and work through all that. Any other questions? Cool. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? No? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, since we want to take this more in a which I know is more like doing a lot of new business, um, what we, well, we offer traditional and social, you know, separate projects. Like, are we going to move towards I'd like to do that. I think we're a, it's a, it's a great question. I think we're a little bit constrained with, with our uh, antiquated form of CompCon and how that is um, served to the clients because CompCon doesn't really grab social stuff. I'd like it to be in the vein a little bit more of like Signal, how they kind of combine that stuff together a little bit. Um, the platform itself right now doesn't specifically allow for that, but I think there are ways that we can integrate that a little bit better, and I think we need to. So that's, that's a great observation. Um, and also, I mean, from a higher level for me, it doesn't matter if it's traditional, if it's social, digital, it's all communication. We're communicating for our brands on behalf of our brands, right? So I would love to just be like, this is our communication and here's all the, of, you know, the spokes in the wheel of communication, you know, and we're executing on all these things and it shouldn't be, you know, super weighted one way or the other, you know, going into it. It should all be pieces because it's all going to add up, right, to building up that brand equity for our clients and their content. Well, I just know coming from HMP, like a different agency, um, I was seeing a lot more. I was just seeing traditional media relations. Um, I had some social responsibility, responsibilities too, but I feel like since we take a more siloed approach here, it kind of reflects on our identity. Yeah, I don't, I don't, and that's the thing. I'm trying to break down those silos. Yeah. That's why I'm saying, like, the more you guys get um, familiar with just thinking like this a little bit more, it's going to benefit you, yeah. and it'll benefit our clients a lot too. Yeah, I mean, and it's exactly like you said. Like, we can't be siloed. Right. We can't. What What I'd love to figure out what the next step is then for being siloed, because like I know you guys are busy yeah and handling as you said like the, the social components of each client are getting bigger and bigger yep so what i'd like to understand is i mean clearly and i have some social experience i think we all do is figure out how we can work a little more closely together to help 
with some of the bait and tackle stuff yes. that's on the, the agenda for various clients. For example, if we're doing a campaign for Coyote around a certain real giveaway, how can we support you guys to make it more integrated mm -hmm. so that we're coming up with some of those tweets? Like, what might that look like? So I don't know if there are example plans that you could send around to everybody or something so we can take a look and then maybe next time this comes up, we can say, you know, can one of you guys tackle this? Here's an example, model after this, and then you can write it by you so that you're not fully cool. Yeah, 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 no, that's a great idea. And I think, I mean, I can, we could, we could talk about just like a coyote as like a, you know, hypothetical example or something mm -hmm. like that. Let's say we're working with an influencer and we're gonna be doing a giveaway of a grill. Now, even for coyote and Bertazzoni, what's really helped a lot of those take off besides just the influencer relation and us pushing out through social, right? Like mm -hmm. you guys getting pickup and blogs that do giveaways mm -hmm. and things like that, right? So, you know, as that content comes out, refer to a Twitter list, refer to certain hashtags and things like that to get, to drive more awareness of that. You guys are very well versed on who the journalists and pubs are that might be interested in this kind of stuff, right? So an easy way to connect with them and let them know about it is through this. A couple retweets from some heavy hitters on Twitter and all of a sudden the campaign just got blown out huge, right? So that's something that, and again, we, even as a digital department, need to, you know, do all this stuff ourselves too. It's not just us saying, well, you guys need to get better. Like, we, we take this to heart too. We do all this too, as much as we can. So, um, so yeah, it's a great question. And, um, you know, I think just starting out with doing some of this type of stuff initially and getting yourself just into the mindset and just kind of gearing for this kind of stuff will help those things come to light that much easier, you know? And then like, for example, if you see like, you know, we're doing something like one of your clients is doing something, mm -hmm. you know, what? Wow, oh, let me, let me poke around on LinkedIn real quick and see if I can find like a group or, you know, some other content on there that I could tie this into and, and do this for my, and, and, you know, kind of get this out there for my client a little bit better. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, cause like, I'm just thinking for like the coyote plan that we just did, we had a bunch of social ideas in there about like a grill giveaway or this kind of thing. What I personally would love to know, and I don't know if it's going to be like session take two sure. to get a little more granular, I'd like to know how I could just make that happen. Like I know how to come up with the idea for the social campaign, but I don't know how to actually make it happen. Yep, yep. So I'd love um, to figure that out so that if you're crazed, you could say, hey, well, it's a great idea, and I'm more than happy to send along various like plans and outlines of things. We usually try to keep them like one to two pages, so they're pretty understandable for clients and everybody else, partners and internally. So um, I can certainly, um, what I can do is probably just create a folder on the server, um, yeah, or or a huddle or whatever, and um, post a few examples of outlines of client partnerships that we've done, campaigns, things like that, so you guys can just see how you can do that. And if you want to be like, hey. Shane, I would love to take a stab at, out, at updating this outline. You know, let me go ahead and try to do that. In fact, Anna and Sierra are taking a stab at doing an outline for an upcoming campaign right now. They have already are willing to take that, take the reins on something like that and get it going. So, great job being proactive there. Yeah. So obviously, social engagement is an important metric, but how do you help clients understand the business you know, it's one thing to get like a hundred more followers or whatever, but if it's not reflecting in the revenue, how do you help them understand that's so important? It's a good question, and it's the same question of helping clients understand the value of public relations, right? So you get an article in, you know, New York Times, great. Did you see any, like, you know, mm -hmm. did you see any inbound traffic or installs that you can tie exactly back to the article? Not always, you know? So, and this is the way that um, that's traditionally approached is that <clears throat> here's your here's our client's trajectory of you know lead generation whatever that happens to be is it you know somebody coming and buying a coyote grill is it somebody coming and downloading an ebook is it somebody coming and um, you know doing uh, you know whatever that, or installing the app whatever that happens to be right that's a business goal right we're getting money or getting users of our product because of this, right? So this is their trajectory, right? And we come in and we say, okay, cool. So we did some, uh, we did a PR push and some social stuff, you know, right around here. And then they go, oh yeah, we saw those bumps. So we attribute that to your efforts. 
these bumps are out of line with our tra normal trajectory. So we're gonna have to attribute those bumps to the media attention that's been generated around whatever you guys are doing. Yeah? I mean, it's not an exact science always. Sometimes with social, sometimes it's a, it's a little bit easier because it's like online for the most part. You can like track things back. And the way that clients look at this is looking at their Google Analytics and saying, okay, during this time frame, that article came out, I had 100 new visitors to my website and you know, 40 of them came and you know, signed up for my product. I guess, is that another thing, like the, the social slide that we put in the Comic-Con? Are you two the only ones who know how to do that? I don't know. No. Yeah. Sharon knows yeah. how to do it. Yeah. Haley knows how to do it. Okay, that's done. Yeah. We're just gonna try like as many, as much stuff that we can start to learn. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Yep. No, and I'm more than happy to kind of walk you guys through that kind of stuff specifically. Are there any yeah, specific like pieces of this? Sit down. Yeah, we could do we could do a follow up and, and just do it real quick. And it doesn't even mean that doesn't mean like all oh, oh god like you guys are all of a sudden going to have to do Sysimos pulls. Like that's not what that means. What it means is you're going to understand better what we're tracking and why, so that you think a little bit more holistically and comprehensively about the work that you're doing allows you to do your work better. And if like one of you guys is tied up. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know how to do it. It goes back to that. Yeah. Everything yes. goes back to this. Exactly. What coach did this come from? Long. I'm going to say Coach K. Coach K. These are the five pillars of the man to man defense. And on that note, you, you know, can do all the traditional media relations slides on Yeah. So, you know, I would love somebody to come in here and do something like this for traditional media. Maybe Chris or Aaron or some, you know, could, could provide some insights and some things like that that sure. we might be able to take away from it. You know, yeah. I think that'd be pretty good. All righty. If that's it for questions and stuff, I'm gonna stop. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you.